I think it's time. <laughs> Let me go ahead and take off the welcome screen. And I'll turn this way. Hello. <laughs> Hello, music makers. Um, my name is Izzy Chia, and I am a piano teacher, actually a music teacher. I teach piano, flute, and voice lessons out of my home in Pearland, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston, Texas. And I'm very, very thrilled to be able to offer virtual lessons for you guys. Um, I know the circumstances are really strange right now, and that's okay if things are not as you're usually used to having them. I know some of my new virtual students are my current students, which I haven't seen in a few weeks. Some of them, um, some of you guys have piano teachers in your cities and your current students, so thanks for coming in. Um, and then I also have some brand new kids um, coming into this um, with absolutely no knowledge of piano at all, and that's totally fine. I'm here for you guys. Um, so bear with me as we get started here because it's going to be, um, I have to find a place to start for everybody. So a lot of the things that the current piano students have um, already learned are um, going to be a little repetitive for today, but that's why I wanted to make it an intro. Um, starting next week, we will begin in our Alfred um, lesson book. I'll show it to you. This is our silver books. We're going to start next week, and we will begin actually reading some of the music in this book, okay? To complement it as well, we have our theory book, which in addition to learning to play the piano, we're also going to learn how to read and write music. This is also super important. And what's cool about it is that music theory, all the knowledge that you gain from that is going to be transferred to any other instrument if you decide to learn something else in the future. So, without further ado, we can get started. Um, a couple um, things I probably need to say to parents. Um, first things first, for these lessons, make sure you have your notifications for Encore Music Studio turned on. So that way you know when those lessons are coming. Um, also, make sure if you haven't filled out the registration form, go ahead and do that. And if you haven't ordered your books, you can check those two links out to purchase your books. Um, once I've gotten all of your registration information, over the weekend I'm going to create a private Facebook group and I will send you an invitation to that group. Basically, this is where I'm going to post assignments and people can post their video um, practice log and things like that. So um, I'll have more details about that later. So anywho, I'm excited to get started. So first things first, let's talk about the piano a little bit, okay? The piano is a percussion instrument, okay? That's kind of hard to imagine, but it's built with strings on the inside and hammers that hit those strings at varying points. Take a listen. So it's literally the hammer is hitting the string at various points. The sound difference that you hear is based on how long those strings are and that hammer hitting it. So it's kind of cool. You notice that the bottom half of the piano, oh, let me switch, here we go. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So the bottom part of the piano down here is consisting of our low notes. Super low. Right? But as we move up the piano, you notice that the sound gets higher and higher in pitch. So we've got some low notes, some in the middle, and some high notes. So if you have a piano or keyboard at home now, I want you to spend a couple seconds playing some low notes some notes in the middle, and then some up high. All right, wonderful. Now, let's see. We're gonna learn a little bit now about hand positions. So I'm gonna switch back to this. So, hand positions. So when we're playing our piano, we don't wanna have our flat fingers, kinda like, 
witch fingers or zombie hands or whatever you want to call it. We don't want it to be flat, right? Because that limits the range of motion of your fingers. You want to be able to curve those fingers. I like to pretend that I have like some kind of bubble under my hand, right? Like something, a bubble you don't want to pop is what I like to imagine. So imagine either your bubble is full of like glitter <laughs> or something really stinky like a bog bubble or something gross. You don't want to pop that bubble, okay? Because if you pop that bubble, either you are you have glitter flying everywhere or you've got stink all over your room. So of course we're imagining this, right? We just want to make sure that our hands are nice and curved. So go ahead and place your hands anywhere on your keyboard or piano and notice that it's curved, okay? There's my bubble underneath. You guys can see it's above hands, okay? So once it's nice and curved, we can move on. Very good. Now, I'm gonna switch back to this one here. Okay, so we've got our keyboard view again. And with this keyboard view, I want you to notice, we have black keys on the piano and we have white keys on the piano, okay? The black keys, if you've noticed, they're in uh, groups of two and three. Two and three. And you notice it alternates patterns. There you go. So what I want you to do now is find a two black key group and I want you to play those. All right, so I'm gonna start here at the bottom. That was kinda cool. Let me find another one. Notice I'm going higher and higher. And now I get to the middle, I'm gonna to switch to my right hand. Cool. All right, so now that we've played all the two black key groups, we're gonna switch to the three black key groups, okay? If you notice down here, this on my piano and any other acoustic piano that's got 88 keys, you see this lonely one down here. This one right here is actually part of a three black key group, but <laughs> I like to call it my grumpy grandpa key because he's by himself and then it's like, there's no more room for the rest of the keys. So we'll consider him part of the three black key groups. So we'll start with that one. He's like super grumpy, oh my gosh. Okay, moving on, we got this one. Very nice. Keep going, I'm switching hands. So those are my three black key groups, okay? Wonderful. I see that somebody had posted on here um, asking if this video will be available for later viewing. This is true, okay. The videos will be available after this stream. So if you happen to need to exit the video, you absolutely can view it later. Or if you wanna watch it later, that's fine too, okay? All right, back to the lesson plan here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Finger numbers, okay. So, the way we start sort of exploring the piano is we have to understand that we only have 10 fingers <laughs> and we have 88 keys that we have to eventually play. So, the best way to start piano is by learning your finger numbers. So, if you wanna put your hands up and do a little jazz hands or something, I want you to wiggle your thumbs. Great. So. Those thumbs are going to be your finger number one. Now, wiggle your pointer fingers. Good. So this is your finger two. Now, wiggle your middle fingers. Great job. That is your finger three. Now try your ring finger. This is kind of tricky. There you go. Those are called your finger four. And last but not least, we have pinkies. And those are our finger five. Okay, so a little quiz. I want you to wiggle your finger three. Okay, now wiggle your finger five. 
finger two. Can you do your twos? How about your four? And last but not least, how about your finger one? Awesome. Great job. Okay, so now that we know our finger numbers, I want to go back to that exercise of playing the black keys, okay? We're going to start with the two black key groups, but I want you to use your fingers two and three to find them, okay? So let's go back to the piano and we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm using my fingers two and three, and I'm going to play my two black key group. different this time. Instead of one at a time, I'm going to play them at the same time. And I'm going to skip a few and I'm going to find another one. Cool. And I'm going to switch over here. Yeah. Did everybody use a finger two and three? Great job. All right. Now we're switching to three black key groups and I'd like you to use your fingers two, three, four this time. Okay, two, three, four, and we're gonna play a three black key group. All right, I think I'm gonna start up high this time. And remember, we're gonna play them all at the same time this time. Ooh, that sounds cool. Very nice. Getting a little lower. So we've done our two black key groups, our three black key groups, with our fingers two, three, and four. Wonderful. All right, give yourself a hand. That was awesome. All right, switching back over here. Now, we're also going to learn about white keys because we have black keys and white keys on the piano. So the white keys are pretty awesome because if you know the first seven letters of the alphabet, then you know your white keys on the piano. I like to say this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now I know my piano keys. I know it's kind of silly, but it works, I promise. <laughs> okay, but now we have to learn how to find those white keys on the keyboard. Okay, so let's spend a little bit of time exploring that. All right, switching back over here. We've got the keyboard. Woohoo! Now, we spent some time looking for two black key groups and three black key groups, right? But now these notes are going to be our reference notes, okay? What I want you to do is find a three black key group, okay? And in between the second and the third black key, there's a white key. That white key is an A, okay? So look and see if you can find all of your A's on your keyboard or piano. And I want you to play them. There's mine. Let's see if we can find another one. Good. Ooh, nice and low. And if you notice, the very bottom is also an A because technically Grumpy Grandpa key down here is part of the three black key group. Now we're gonna switch hands up here to the right hand. Let's see if we can find an A up here. Cool. Switching up again. Another three black key group. And our last one way over here is also an A. Very good. All right, very, very nice job, everybody. Okay, moving on. What's the next key? We have to play a B. So B, luckily is right next to A. It's going to be after the third black key in the three black key group. It's that white key right there next to it. You notice A is right next to it. So there's your B. Let's play Bs. All right, everybody play your B. All the Bs on your keyboard or piano. Switching to my left hand now, we've got our three black key group, and there's my B. And I'm going back down, and way down here next to our grumpy grandpa. Super low. This is where the elephants live. Woohoo! You can tell I teach kids, right? <laughs> All right, wonderful. So after B, we have C. All 
right? So C is a really special and interesting note, and you're going to be using it quite a bit in lessons. Okay, find a two black key group, okay? And the very first white key below the first black key of the two black key group is your C. So go ahead and play your C's. getting higher and then the very last key way up at the top is also a C okay now if you notice there's actually a C that sort of divides the piano in half when we start reading um, music on the grand staff which I will teach you about soon you'll notice that C or what they call the middle C is the dividing line between the treble staff and the bass staff. Some of my current students can tell you all about that. And some of those students that have already started piano with other teachers. So that middle C is gonna be a very important note. All right, so make sure that we always find that one. It's, it's a good reference is like, if you're sitting in the middle of your keyboard or piano, the one, the C that's closest to your belly button is gonna be a C, okay, that's your middle C. Right? I'm typically not a teacher that likes to put stickers on the keyboard because I feel like it's more important to remember reference wise where the key is in relationship to the other key. It's important not to have an over reliance on stickers because when you encounter a piano or a keyboard at another location and they don't have your stickers, then you're out of luck, right? We don't want to be able to like show up at grandma's house when we can finally do that um, and play a song that you learn and then not have your stickers and then you're like oh no that's not good so that's why i don't like to use um, note stickers on keyboards or pianos it's just my preference um, but that you you know you may have a teacher that says differently which that's fine too okay now we just did c now let's see if we can find d look for your two black key groups and in between both of them, there's a note. That's your D. Let's see if we can play all of our Ds. Good. Let's see, play my low one. Switching up here. Very nice. We're gonna keep going. And that's the last D up there, okay? Now, you can probably guess what comes next. We have E, right? And that's the last white key in the two black key group. You notice right there. So let's play our E's. Very good. All the way. And let's play some low E's. Now you'll notice when I play this E on my piano, it sounds kind of ugly, listen. Okay, so my E sounds bad because it was already time to call the piano tuner, but of course he can't come anymore. So I just like to say that there's a troll living in that E. I'll play it again. Yikes! And then I'll go down one more. So we don't want to play the troll note, that's okay. No thanks. We don't want to wake him up. So anyway, after E we've got F, okay? So if you look at your three black key group, the very first white key in the three black key group is your F. So let's play Fs. Very good. Nice job. Super high. Now let's go back down. Ooh, I like that low one. Very, very cool. Now after F, we've got G, okay? G is going to be between the first and second black key in the three black key group. So it's going to be this one. Let's play our Gs. Great job, now let's go down. Your 
white keys and all of your black keys on the entire piano if you're using a, an acoustic piano. Same thing with your keyboard. Like I said before, the actual acoustic piano has 88 keys and you just played all of them, which is kind of cool. All right. Good, good work. All right. So now moving on to the second section here. Um, some of my current students and those of you that have been taking lessons before are very familiar with how we um, have music on a piece of paper, right? We've got notes. And the first four notes that I'm going to teach you today are those that are pretty prevalent in our music. The first one you're going to see here is called a quarter note. And I'm sure everybody knows this one. And if you don't, that's okay too. But basically, this note is going to get one beat or one count when we're talking about music. Okay, you'll encounter this one quite a bit. All right, so this is the quarter note. Now, moving on. Our next note is the half note. Okay, so if you think about it in mathematical terms, the quarter note is one beat. The half note, how many beats do you think the half note gets? It'll be two beats. Yeah, very nice. So this is the half note. So when you encounter it, you're going to hold that note for two beats. Okay. Our next note is kind of special. I love it. It's the dotted half note. Okay, it's kind of related to the half note in that, yes, it does get two beats, but this dot here will add one extra beat for a total of three beats. Okay, let's recap. Quarter note, one beat. Half note, two beats. Dotted half note, three beats. Okay, you ready for the last note? All right, let's check it out. Our last note we're learning today is going to be the whole note, okay? This whole note kind of just looks like a big donut to me. You can tell I'm probably hungry. Um, but it is going to be like the big mamma jamma here. It is four beats long, okay? So when you encounter a whole note in your music, you're gonna hold it for four counts, okay? It feels like an eternity when you're playing your music, but that's okay. That's the point of it. Four beats, okay? Now, so those are your notes. All right, to recap again, let me get my flashcards here. All right, what is this one called? Good. What about this guy? Oh, we already did that one. And what about this one? And last? Very nice. Okay. Great job. All right. So now we know our notes. Now, I talked a little bit about how the notes are counts, right? So in order for us to really think about how we're putting this together in music, is um, we use something called measures and bar lines to divide those measures. In my mind right now, I'm thinking, let's see if we can divide our measure in four beats, right? So let's think about what we can do to add up to four, right? A lot of times you'll hear music teachers referring to um, measures, uh, in their rhythmic teaching, in their rhythm teaching. So what I would like to do is clap, because you have hands. <laughs> we will clap four beats and then four more beats for a total of eight quarter notes. Are you ready? One, two, ready, clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That was a very Great job. You gave yourself a slow clap right there. <laughs> so that's good. All right, so now let's see if we can divide those two measures again into half notes instead. So instead of individual beats, we're going to hold those first 
uh, hold those first notes, okay? So let's divide it into four half notes. You ready? One, two, ready, clap. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Very good, that was awesome. Now, let's see if we can divide it again into whole notes. Remember the whole note gets four beats. So in order to have two measures of four beats, we need to have two whole notes, okay? So let's count off, are you ready? One, two, ready, go. One, two, oh, Mrs. you messed up. <laughs> let's try it one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good, so you did two whole notes. That's fantastic. All right, last but not least, we had the dotted half note, right? And this is three beats. So if we're trying to make measures of four beats, let's see if we can do a dotted half note plus a quarter note, because that equals four beats, correct? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is going to be the rhythm that we're going to do. All right, so let me put that up there. All right, let's try that. One, two, ready, clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice job, that was really, really good. I'm, I'm excited. You guys are doing this, a really wonderful job for this being online. <laughs> yes. All right, so we've learned about the structure of the piano. We've learned about low and high notes. We've learned about our hand position to keep a bubble under there, right? We've learned about the two black key groups and the three black key groups. We've learned our finger numbers. We have played all the black keys and all the white keys on the piano. We have discovered where middle C is in the piano. We have also learned about quarter notes, half notes, dotted half notes, and whole notes. And we have practiced some rhythm clapping, okay? This is fantastic for our first lesson with no books. So I'm uh, thrilled to say that we are uh, getting to the end of this lesson. Um, but I have an assignment for you guys, okay? Your assignment is going to be this. You are going to play on all the black keys or on whichever black keys you like, something called a black key rhapsody, okay? I want you to use your imaginations on this and you're going to play whatever you necessarily see fit, right hand, left hand, high or low, something special. Um, so it'll be called a black key rhapsody and what I want you to do is just explore the keyboard on the black keys only. Make sure to use all of your fingers, okay? And when you feel pretty good about the song that you've come up with, see if mom or dad can record you playing it, okay? And once we've got the private Facebook group uh, put together and you get your invite, I would like, I will be posting an assignment post and each student can post their video under that assignment. So Black Key Rhapsody, have some fun exploring and enjoy um, making it your own. It doesn't have to be um, a specific song or a specific way, but I would like you to just have some fun with it. So let me give you an example of what something like that would sound like. So this is Miss Izzy's Black Key Rhapsody.
So there you go. There's an example. Okay. Like I said, make it your own. Um, it's nothing that needs to be complicated or rigid. Just play. All right. Black keys, high and low with all 10 fingers. Okay. All right. Well, I have had a fantastic time. Um, thank you for tuning in and thank you for dealing with some of the technical issues. Um, I know that I was probably supposed to launch in the event itself, but since I'm using a specific app, it wasn't letting me do it. So I had to go to the general page. So I apologize profusely if you were waiting in the event. Um, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, I'm still learning how to do all this too, but I, I just thank you so much for giving me the 30 minutes and giving, uh, trusting me to teach your kids um, piano. I also have an adult and teen class starting next Saturday, um, the 28th, and that'll be from 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, I'm really excited for it. Um, there's a different book that goes along with it, um, but I already have several signups for that one, so I'm very excited. Um, so to close this lesson, um, I'm going to try and do a motivational music quote every time. So here's the quote for today. It's from the amazing musician Billy Joel, okay? He says, I think music in itself is healing. It's an explosive expression of humanity. It's something we are all touched by. No matter what culture we're from, everybody loves music. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon.